This story has been all over social media, uh, really just since yesterday it's been blowing up, but this event actually took place back in, um, I believe it was October of okay. last year. Okay. And uh, essentially what happened is this woman, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm probably going to mispronounce her name, okay. Kanakporn Tangsen. Okay, um, this is, try. This, mm -hmm. is, <laughs> this is her and her husband. Uh, they were on vacation in Disney and they decided to attend one of the restaurants within the uh, Disney Springs area. Okay. Um, this is a restaurant that is actually very, very well known for accommodating to people who have, uh, you know, different dietary preferences. You know, okay. people, they, they claim to be completely allergen free. They claim to go the extra mile for people who, you know, don't do dairy, don't do Not nuts, allergy, whatever, whatever. It, whatever it may be, exactly. Now, as a person who, you you know, I do have, um, I'm a little bit picky when it comes to the type of food that I eat. I don't call myself a vegan per se, but, but I do prefer to eat plant-based. And it's just easier for me to say vegan when I go out to eat. Yeah. So I understand what it's like to say, okay, no, but are you sure? So there's there's no milk in it. Yeah. There's, there's, there's no dairy. You guys don't use like the same, you know, fryer for your chicken as what you do your fish, for example. I'm used to asking all of these questions. And I'm sure that this woman, who had a uh, a life threatening um, allergy to both dairy and nuts? Uh -oh. Also asked these questions several times over. From all the research I've done, um, it is confirmed that all of those checks and balances were in place. And they said, "Yep, yeah, all good. You know, we're we're going to bring you out your meal. I believe she ordered like broccoli, like uh, fritters, like a bunch of stuff that should not have had dairy or nuts in it. Okay." okay? Um, so she leaves, they they walk around the park, and then a couple of hours later, she starts to get an allergy attack. She administers the uh, EpiPen yep. on herself, yep. um, but to no avail. Unfortunately, she had to be taken to hospital, and she later died Damn. while she was in the hospital. Um, now, this is where things get really, really crazy. So the husband, of course, is trying to sue for wrongful death. And in my opinion, he could sue them for a lot of money. I mean, what would that be worth to you guys? I'd be suing I mean, for I, I, I'm just millions saying, I would millions. say 100 million. Dude, that's my wife. That's it, my life. That's my future. If a restaurant <laughs> killed my wife, I'd burn the restaurant to the ground. Oh, they, oh but, uh, I'd be in prison. There's but There's no dollar amount that would make that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There, there is going to be a great, great point. But but I'm, I'm just saying if, if it had to come to money besides us killing everybody, I think like what, 50, 100 million? Because besides the lawyer, what about her family? What about, I don't know if they have any kids or anything like that. It's like, yeah. it's horrible. So guess, guess how much he asked for. This how, is all how, he asked for. How much? $50,000. Wow. $50,000 to be able to cover the cost of the funeral and to be able to seek some damages in addition to that for the me uh, you know, mental turmoil and emotional damages that he experienced. Very minimal. Disney, multi-billion dollar company, literally one of the biggest companies in the entire world world that is chump change for them they could so easily say that That's nothing. and and they should just out of doing the right moral thing however they're actually saying that no they're not going to pay it and the reason why is so utterly ridiculous that it's it's barely even believable so um kelly we can pull up this slide that you have here so essentially it's stating that because her husband signed up for a free one month subscription of Disney Plus, not even the fully paid membership, okay? A subscription, one month subscription of Disney Plus. Okay. Deep she within the fine print of the terms and conditions, it actually states uh, we can. Can we go back? Can we go back yeah, to that? Yeah. I want to read that. Let's so this, wait, this isn't the contract. When you sign up for Disney Plus, this is the fine print? Correct. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, can you read that for me? That's Sorry, any dispute between you and us, except for small claims, is subject to a class action waiver and must be resolved by individual binding arbitration. So uh, essentially, this means that the parties agree to waive their right to a trial huh. and agree to accept the arbitrator's decision as final. So no appeals. There's wow. absolutely no way to be able to contest the decision. And um, essentially, what an arbitration means, uh, it's submission of a dispute to a neutral party who's able to hear everything out. So not a judge, not a jury, basically stripping away the entire 
legal process uh, from them. You re- okay? Do you guys realize? Wait a minute. So <laughs> you know what that means? This this poor woman dies because she was lied to at a restaurant. Then her husband's asking for fifty thousand dollars. That means somebody had to look up and be like, wait, dude, it's not like he has an active subscription. Mm -hmm. They had to do research, Mm -hmm. in-depth background check and be like, guys, I found it. He signed up for Disney Plus. So if you signed up for Disney Plus, anything that has to do with Disney, you waive all your rights to actually go after them in court, something major. That is absolutely ridiculous, bro. Disney hates you. And guess what? We hate Disney. (laughs) And I'm so happy they're losing billions and billions of dollars with your woke bullshit. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't enough for them to be injecting all of this LGBTQ stuff in their movies, you know, uh, race switching, um, making everybody gay, trying to indoctrinate your children. Yeah, they also hate you enough that they're basically saying, even if we kill you, you're going to have absolutely no legal recourse to be able to follow that up. And I just think that... It's just mind-blowing because this sets the craziest precedent as well if this goes through. Like, does this mean that all of us, from here on out, every single time we sign a user agreement, we need to dig into the fine print to determine if they kill us, yeah. are we going to have any legal recourse to be able to follow that up? Yes, like, that, that is exactly yeah. what that means. <gasps> and that's impossible, about, too. Think about how many... Uh, terms of service, terms and conditions, Updates user agreements you that you have agreed to yeah. because you look at it and say, this is 4,000 pages mm-hmm. of two-point font. Yes. I can't read this. All I want to do is update my iPhone. Okay, let I'll agree to it. None of us for decades have any idea what we have agreed to. No. And when you find things out like this with Disney, mm-hmm. what, what they're saying is an agreement you signed up for for a streaming service means that you cannot take a corporation to court over something that happened at a restaurant. Mm-hmm. And their defense was, hey... The, we're just trying to protect ourselves. You're suing the restaurant. We don't want to be involved, even though it's their restaurant. Right. The restaurant's technically a separate en- entity within Disney Springs. And their other point is, oh, yeah, but like it was in bold letters right at the top. He should have seen it. And also he agreed to the same thing when he bought tickets to Epcot two years ago. The, hmm. the park, yeah. Yeah, the, the oh, Disney God. Plus subscription was from 2019 mm-hmm. for one month. Yeah. He never paid for it. He just downloaded it on his PlayStation agreed to it, and then canceled it. So basically what that means is, hey, did you ever watch an episode of The Mandalorian? Well, now Disney gets to kill your wife and there's nothing you can do about it. It's insane. Wow. Dude, that's, Kelly, we're not going, because me, normally me and Kelly, for her birthday, Nat is involved too. We're not We're not going to Disney. Sorry. <laughs> that's, I'm going to protest for this guy. Like, I'm putting... Universal. Okay, that's fine. Is that that's not Disney, right? So I no. I spoke to one of my lawyer uh, friends to get a little bit of clarity. And so for what she stated is this should be the legal question that is okay. being asked. So yeah. would a reasonable person okay. have signed up to Disney Plus if they knew that it meant that they could never sue them for any possible reason in the future? And if the answer to that question is no, then it could he he could have a fighting chance of actually uh, winning this case. The example that they give in law school they call it uh when something is unconscionable unconscionable yeah good word uh it, so essentially the example they give in law school is let's say somebody's freezing on the side of the road you approach them and they ask for your jacket and you say okay here's my jacket but if you survive you have to pay me 30 million dollars the person only agreed to that because they were dying right it, mm. it doesn't make sense it's something that would absolutely shock the conscious if they were to follow through and following that same legal reasoning you know you could say that the same could be applied here it's unconscionable that they would be able to enforce this contract it just makes no sense what do you think, Rob? Unfortunately, you're going up against Disney. So even if he is in the right, it's an extreme uphill battle. At this point, if all the guy is asking for is 50 grand to help with the funeral and the cost of bills because he's in a mourning period of losing his wife, 50 grand, I know this sounds retarded to say out loud, but it's not that much money that we couldn't raise that on a GoFundMe for this guy. Like, why even go this route of trying to battle this evil empire that is Disney when us, the people, could do more for this guy than this billion-dollar corporation could? And nobody here in this room is worth hundreds of millions or billions of dollars, Mm -hmm. but I bet if you asked each one of us, hey, would you throw five bucks towards this guy? Would you throw ten bucks? And I think that's really the beauty of the Internet is that... I, uh, on Wednesday's episode, I talked about how the internet is literally ruining humanity, and while it is, there are some good parts of it, and, and this is one of them. The ability to be able to 
fundraise for people that you've never met and would never know their story unless you're able to see it on the internet, read their story, feel compassion for the person, want to help, but you don't know how? Well, here's how you can with GoFundMe. With So there's a lot of ways that this guy can get this 50 grand without going the route of fighting Disney. And that would be my advice is you, you ain't going to beat the evil empire, no. bro. So at this point, it's shitty and it looks really bad for them. We should just keep calling it out and highlighting what a crappy corporation they are and this is case in point leave the we could talk about the lgbtq and all that stuff uh you know that in in and of itself is disgusting and, and it is an issue but right here on this core um this core issue alone disney is really showing oh. what they're all about oh i i 1000 it's like how many more instances can you let us know that you guys have completely lost such this was supposed to be a place where you come and you're happy the happiest place on earth you're supposed to get good good entertainment you're supposed to watch these cartoons this shift bro it's almost it's like a parasite has entered like remember in um uh, matrix when the agent takes that little that little worm thing and it goes inside the uh neo neo stomach that's what has happened with Disney, it's that woke, disgusting, bro. Just as a company in general, really, really, Disney, you're going. You found out that this guy had a a trial run, and that's where you you have your lawyers finding the fine print. I don't know if he has a GoFundMe, Rob, but I, I'm gonna find out if he, if he doesn't have a GoFundMe. I mean, that would be a no brainer for this guy to get a, a couple of hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. uh, sent to him to help him and his family. It, God, yeah. God. it makes go? me like you said, you don't want to go to Disney. This is the stuff that makes me go. Let's cancel the Disney Plus yep. membership. Let's not support this anymore because, look, the, the the good part about the Disney Plus, I do it with my children. We watch the old movies, not the new ones, good. but we'll go back and we'll watch the original Robin Hood. We'll go back and we'll watch Homeward Bound. These are movies between the 60s and the mid-90s nice. where there wasn't this weird, hey, everybody's got to be represented in this film. It was about telling a story that kids can watch and kids can um, take some type of value from. I don't feel that way watching I Disney don't. movies anymore. So now it's like, do we even need this? Do we need to spend the $7 a month to give these dicks nope. our yeah. money? Because look at how they treat their customers. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys, moving on. Uh, great story, Amy. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I'm happy. I deleted my app yesterday when you told me. I deleted that app. Uh, yesterday, and I'm I'm canceling my service. But anyway, uh, Connor, too late, you already signed up for it. What's up? Yeah, too late. I already signed up for yeah, it. But yeah. guess what? So I'm not gonna be going. To, I'm not gonna go to Disney anytime soon. Well, we need but, to regulate the terms of service thing because that's a weaponized thing from any company. Yeah. yeah but, what happens if they say that with your cell phone? Hey, by the way, you signed up with it. Verizon. Or, okay. Uh, your car insurance. Any of these terms of services where it can you say anything completely cover the company under any blanket. Yeah, scenario, and you're not and you're, should and be examined. You're not reading it because you just put accept, dude. Just this past month. I've gotten three. Hey, we're updating our service. I don't even. I go yay next. And I don't give a damn. It's unconscionable to make the uh, to expect you to read that. Like, you know, exactly. who, you know who else does that? The United States government. Yeah. Every yeah, time they bills. pass one of these omnibus bills, that's four four thousand pages, pages overnight on the weekend. That even our congressmen have not read. Oh, when they clump a read. bunch of bills into the same bill, basically, mm -hmm. yeah. like when they did the nonpartisan border bill, but it was actually to fund Ukraine. Yep. Uh, gotcha. That, that was a wartime measure too. It used to only be one bill um, per law, so but then they did they bundled them together because of a wartime expediting thing, and now we get four thousand page bills. But <laughs> even the terms and conditions, like Vinny, a lot of people are like you. I'm like you, where I don't read them, but there are people out there who will read them. The problem is those are written by. By lawyers who are using vague language to protect their clients which are the companies yeah. so even if you were to sit down and read it there's nobody that's going to read that and go oh so if my wife dies from a peanut allergy when we go to epcot in three <laughs> months from now i'm gonna not be able to do anything about it. nobody actually thinks nobody. and reads it that way lawyers except do. for the people who do yeah. so it's not fair even if you do read it to read these legal jargon and then have that apply to everyday citizens who don't have the mental capability to be able to understand the jargon that they're reading so you know what and that being said in closing if I ever see Mickey Mouse or Goofy, I'm going to punch them right in the face. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Vincent O'Shawn here. If you want to see me and the entire Valuetainment crew, we will be at the Vault Conference September 4th through the 7th at the Palm Beach Convention Center, hosted by none other than Patrick McDavid and featuring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Guys, this is the place to be. If you are an entrepreneur and you want to level up, do not miss this opportunity. This is the best place to network. If you want tickets, go to thevaultconference.com. Do not waste time this thing is going to sell out and i will see you guys there peace and love so if you like this clip click right here and if you want to see more like it click right here stay angry patriots